Hello and welcome. Currently that of the 11th day of uh, April 2013. It is 3.02 a.m. UTC or 11.02 p.m. Eastern Time. As I'm doing this video, my name is Derek and this is the Money Charts channel. All bets, trades, and amongst the like. That's each his own risk and their own reward. Not going to go much on the silver market to start a lot is going on within the cryptocurrency markets and I got a lot to go over within it but within the silver market I found a very interesting piece of silver and as far as ordering it if I have to wait for it I'd rather not buy it meaning what do you got in stock now ship it to me now all that type of stuff if there's going to be a delay probably not going to want it but I seen a bar that I liked I like it so much I actually made the order for it and this is what the silver bar looks like. A Wall Street one, and not the typical Wall Street bar that I'm used to seeing anyway on the 10 ounce side. When the art's nice, it's nice. I think this is a magnificent piece uh, with the silver squeeze and WallStreetSilver.com. It's a, a 10 ounce bar, and there's a that same person holding a moon, like the moonshot, if you will, or a rocket going to the moon. As of course, silver prices, a lot of people, myself included, feel as if, I guess for lack of better terms, price is going to the moon, but it literally won't. Now, the delay on them, uh, Silver Gold Ball is the one sending it. That's a, it's a, They're not sh shipping until the end of the month. But you know what, though? It's, uh, I don't know, maybe it'll go up in value as far as, when I say go up in value, how much more does it cost per ounce? Like, like how much of the spot premium raise or decrease in time um, that's I think it'll do pretty well so I decided to buy that and uh, let's now move on to cryptocurrencies first off is Bitcoin currently priced at sixty thousand five hundred and seventy two dollars and Saturday was most certainly a very very volatile interesting interesting amazing day at least on a bullish level amazing the setup for this thing to go much higher is fantastic Amazing, majorly fantastic. We came up to this high on February the 20th, price action coming up to uh, 58,000 mid change. Pulls back, really the next, that day even, to uh, 47, then down to 45, and a few days later, as low as 43. We haven't seen anything near that price since. And then it comes back to it March the 10th through that of March the 14th microscopically but most certainly noticeably or maybe microscopically isn't the best word but for lack of better words hey got above it then a higher low correction uh, dated March the 25th higher low to the previous date of February the 28th last one was 43 this one was down to uh, 50,000 which also represents the level of resistance it had before and after the fact of that low and then price action back up to this level pretty much retesting again this uh, 58,000 change and then making a higher low here pretty much the resistance of here again this resistance here is well I mean if we can hold and stay above 58 now and that's what I've been saying before with these lines in there can the market hold and stay above this 56 level well yeah it's done a fantastic job of doing so for it got above it on the 29th of March so 12 days holding and staying above 56,500 and then within today's session here here's that interesting move that took place we came up today at the right at the start of the day really or 24 hours ago it's 11 p.m. Eastern as I'm doing this now coming up to this level and then pulling back to this level of prior resistance from the uh, previous day and then pretty much giving it all back so 61.8 percent let me just bring up my fib calculator once more I'll put in the high which is 61,222 divided by the low which is and you can do this linear or logarithmic when the numbers are this small I'm doing logarithmic always logarithmic settings high divided by low which is like a nothing of a number here 58304 it's like a 1.05 or something and the lower it is and pretty much the exact same this being very low but then the linear scale the linear scale is take the difference of the number and then you'd multiply the percentage of fib I'm going to the exponent of the fib 
So for this selling today to be a real move, Vitesse is holding stay below 60,100. Well, it's already 60,005, so near, near, nope, didn't do it. Nice try, bears. So around 60,500, let's take a look at this on the intraday time frame today. Or 6,100, yeah. So it did kind of resist it here at the 20 stamp today, pulled back, and then it's got above it, it's holding staying above it. So it's really telling me, like, just a few hours, the last few hours, that today's selling has instantly been rejected. So I'm highly as 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 thinking that we're probably going to make a successful passing test of the 61,000 change area. When I say passing test, that means it's like a parlay or multiple things I think are going to occur. Not only should price action concisely move up here relatively soon, but it shouldn't be... I push start. I don't know what I pushed. I pushed my keyboard start and something. I guess I'm into the next one, DGB. But I think it's uh, not going to have much resistance there. We're going to have a de 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 decent leg higher. I guess I didn't plan on showing DGB, but against Bitcoin, it's just, yeah, not much. Let's move on next to Litecoin against the Bitcoin and against the dollar. First against the BTC. Making this high on um, the... Uh, I'm going to go back to Bitcoin again. I should have shown the second, but I'll just go back to it again. For price prediction, but I want to show the dollar first to explain where I'm making my prediction on this. So we have this coming up to the 42 handle, coming back down, and then just breaking, mostly breaking by above that resistance. So very, very magnificent situation and it's so far holding and supporting this level despite the fact that it's barely gotten above it but what's very important when you have a move like this is we have this low we have this high hold the 61.8 and i can just just by looking at it I can tell it's somewhere a little bit below the 40 handle and yeah this thing has been down for quite some time but before we take a look at uh, more longer term uh, litecoin against bitcoin let's take a look against the dollar because this thing is ready to go off Say hello to $420 Litecoin soon, I think. Okay. Fibonacci, I mean, it works so well. You come up here, you resist this 136 level, and you don't even go down, really. And then you get out above it, and then from that point on, it has held and stayed above it the entire time. Does it resist the next Fib level? Oh, definitely. Most certainly it does at 210. Piercing extra, which it usually does. Then a pullback, not to Fib, but to where we came from retest of previous high lower high higher low okay symmetricalness when you're higher low lower highs of course there's only one actually there's only one lower high but this was kind of a lower high to this and then it got above it and this is okay symmetrical is over this downtrend that would have connected this high this high and this high broken seeing how price action is doing very well holding and staying above the 18 average of highs and really, even more importantly, staying above this FIB and how it's broken out in today's session. Just fantastic. Above the 18 average of highs. This is a 76.6% Fibonacci from the $420 highs and these 20 some odd dollar lows. Immediately concise move on its first real rally back in the, I believe it started 2019, or two years back, to 200. And then big correction long 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 correction but for this selling to be a real move and when i say real move that means that it hits this low we do whatever then it's going to go even lower later and these highs have yeah, long long ago we're not going back ever again so for that to be the case it needs to hold stable below this line uh, not doing a good job of it and when you see when i see or whatever when i see anyway it holding and staying above this, okay. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six periods where it's staying above it, but it's not breaking out above it. And then it breaks out above it here. So it's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or ten or eleven periods since it's broke out above it. So it's been holding, it's been holding at a higher there level, and it's showing a great exitation setup as it's looking as it's leaving this 18 average of highs amongst Fibonacci. So I'm not, I mean, yeah, there's Fibonacci here, the 85 and 90%, no, I don't care about that. 100% is previous high at 420. 
I've already went through the 161.8%. I believe that's at, well, I know it is, but my upside target is $2,500. Okay, interestingly, where? And I don't think it's going to take all that long for 2500 to occur. I'm thinking within the... I'm be surprised if I was within this year, let alone in the next year. The 420 level, I expect to happen this month and the next month, but probably the next few days even. I wouldn't be surprised if it happened if it's 420 within a week or 10, a week or 10, 12 days. But well, anyway, that's uh, Litecoin. So as far as the price action is concerned for Bitcoin against Litecoin. If this goes to 2500 what would that mean on the other chart? And as it goes to me, and maybe I should show Doji, because I mean Doji was at the bottom of the range before too. This has just been a purely large range bound market from its start. It established the range at the beginning and it hasn't done anything to change it. In fact, it's done nothing, nothing to change it, but it hasn't even retested the first high. Therefore, where have we been most to at the higher end? 18 to the 20 number? Yeah. So therefore, I guess I'm trying to make, I guess what I'm, and I was doing, trying to do this whole time is, where will Bitcoin be if everything coincides nicely, per, as if they usually do, but you never know, nicely together. So if we have a nice, oh, like a bull market run, this goes up to the 20 period. And looking at this, this could happen four, five, six periods. That's why I wouldn't be surprised if it happens by Christmas. But again, there's, what's to say it starts off now? But when we look back at 2017, this way, way, way below the 18 average of those and it goes. This is below the 18 average of those. And it's been spent a long time below it as it is too. But just to make this 2% like number very easy. 2% is 1 in 50. So if I take 2,500, that would work out to about $125,000 Bitcoin. And you know what? I wouldn't be surprised. I already made a prediction long, long time ago, Bitcoin going about 111 and as a like, number as far as a key upside Fibonacci target that I calculated many months ago. So Bitcoin 125. Litecoin 2500, what would that put Theta at, which I would, I was thinking interesting when I was going through the, these ideas in my head earlier today. Coin currently in at $12.27, having a fantastic run, and this just been doing a bunch of math, hanging in there from the gains. So therefore, you look at the price now at $12.27 compared to that of like say March, I should know that date, I memorize I'm looking at my spreadsheet all the time for all my trades, 22nd, 23rd of the big break selling days for me, but yeah, since the 22nd and 23rd, it's not, it's overextended because it's had a lot of time, but just a little bit to correct that through such in time. And when you get to stages like this, okay, we're going to have to break this range to one side or another, and it's a really tight range from the game. In fact, not only is it a tight range, but establishes resistance on uh, March, well, March of 24th, and well, since then it's going to be a little lower. And it also established the support on March of 25th, and this high has been well, higher. So therefore, it's like a double-edged situation, and this works on both of same. If you break the first resistance of 13 and 3 quarters, we're talking, okay, now we're 15, 14, 57, we're probably going to go higher than that. And wow, if we do. Then we got the 1134 coming down to, to 10 even. Breaking 10, we're probably looking at like seven and a third, and then, but who's to say that's gonna happen? I don't know, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Now, what I find very, very interesting, I watched a few days ago, and I don't watch the JSTIP channel too much, and I was even unaware that there was pro problems with the, and I don't like to have coins on my cell phone, I don't, but apparently with your, some sort of app of some sort, that, it's like your Theta coins weren't even on, the, like, they were there, but you couldn't do anything with them. It might have been a while. It doesn't sound good. But I don't understand if, what that wallet is for me. I uh, I use the main and I want to make sure with all my coins that I have them in a hardware wallet, that I have a private key, whether I have 12 words, 16, 20 words, whether I have a bunch of numbers like 1K2G7, private key that way, written 
mostly, it's mostly in the USB file, but written down in a strategic place and places for that matter. That's how I want to have my uh, my coins. I go to uh, wallet.thetatoken.org forward slash unlock forward slash key store file. I put in my key store file, which is not on my computer. When you make a wallet, create a wallet, they'll they may give you a file. They'll you'll, you'll get a bunch of words for you, for you to write down, and you create a password, which is only good when you have, of course, uh, you're able to log in like this. Really, the password isn't as it's your private keys. That's the most important for if you know your private key but not your password, you're fine. And I can put my private keys in here. I can go to any computer, put my private keys in. I know these aren't real, but and I can get my get my funds in. Hardware wallet. I can use. It. I don't use it with it. I have a Trezor one, but I don't use it. A mnemonic phase. You can put the 12, 12 word. You can just put the private key in itself. Then you put your temporary session. Of course, when I log in, I put in my key store file. I put my password in. I unlock my wallet, and then there's my fade. I'm not going to bring it up. If you have this wallet, you need to have T-Fuel in there, at least a microscopic amount, because you need that to withdraw or to send, just to send your Theta away, or or your Theta Fuel away. It costs 0.501 T-Fuel, which is pretty much nothing to withdraw. But this has been having the files fine all the time, which is uh, just fantastic. I love it this way. Okay, let's now move on to Theta against the Bitcoin. Which pretty much same thing, but the sideways range in here, holding within the 18 thus far. It did make this rally up to this point in here and has pulled off. So a little bit of a reason for concern. I'm kind of cheering for it if you'd say it though, for this to uh, maybe have a move down below here. Now, granted, it's either going to have this break of support, we go lower, and this thing could very easily go to like 40, 50, 60 thousand. I'm also wanting to figure out, okay, if we have Bitcoin going to say 120,000 and it goes up will be uh, double the price I suppose and then we would have Litecoin go up say 10 times would Theta go up 10 times too? for if it did if it went up 10 times that would be uh, over $100 Theta could happen not saying it won't I've seen some wild moves back in the old days and and even today we're seeing a lot of it happen and they've just been already been exposing it already the fact that they can have these big or living it I should say not exposing it living it huge monster gains but that that would just be a monster situation and if it goes up 10 times and Bitcoin goes up two times this could go to 100,000 Satoshi and that's what it would be I wouldn't be surprised if that happened and I kind of hope it does I mean, I don't know, what would I rather cheer for? This thing to just skyrocket up to like 60, 80,000 now or it'll pull back to 10. And if I know 10 is going to go to 100, I'd kind of rather have that first. But yeah, um, I'd be very happy to see, oh, Theta's up 30% today and 60% days. And all these types of moves, man, they're happening now and again with different coins and, and concise moves. I mean, this has went from 5,000 Satoshi up to 20, went from 10 cents, all even 20 cents and 50 cents all the way to 10 bucks. So the... X moves that it has is just magnificent. Is it done? There's no evidence yet that it is. I also like to look at things like the volume in here that comes in. And I've been talking about this before. Every single time in the past when I was going through this, I was looking at some of these previous rallies and I had to be like, I don't think it's over because I don't see the volume. Let's see if I can remember them. Uh, like for example, in this one here. So this is at 39.71. We can see back here the volume was like, well, this is matching these previous volume bars and lower than this volume bar and much lower than this. And then, okay, well now the volume picked up here for the top. Okay, I guess it isn't back in here. I mean, you can see in here the volume had the vo big volume at the top, but before that, you were looking at this point. Oh, are we toppy yet? Well, the volume here was insane. I remember, my, probably a video still saying that. Like, no reason to, if you want to check, whatever. But I think I said back then, oh, I think it looks higher just for that purpose. But it's looking like the same scenario was in play now. The volume just hasn't come in to show that a big top for a big rally, you see the volume happen at the top, whereas the big selling from the top begins. 
don't see it. So I would... Now that, again, if I say, if you were to use the case, volume isn't in, prices on this move should go up higher. Well, how are you going to be right? Are you going to be right because this breaks resistance and goes higher? Or maybe we continue this not so big volume and we'll pull back, and this is what I would hope, but, but whatever. 12,000, 11,000, then it goes up, and then the big volume comes after we break this high and it goes higher. But the markets, of course, will do what they do. I can just, I'll just only react to each situation. And let's finish this off with Tezos because I think this is looking pretty good. Uh, you can call this, I don't know, double bottom. Just a U shape, and then you go back down again and you retest the high. Has to get above the neckline cons noticeably, which would be probably about breaking 1250 to 1260 Satoshi, or 12,000 rather, but 1260 handle. Came up to this high on uh, the 6 with a little bit of a pullback. And Decent size gain, it's pulling back now. A little frustrating, at least on my end. Because last night what was going on is this was rallying pretty much right at the top. I'm like, oh, just barely enough for me to make a sale for something. And I deposit coins onto the exchange. And they're still on there. I haven't done anything with them since because oh, it's went down. And I'm, what's it, the buy theta, I think? I think it's the buy theta. So I'm just holding on, waiting for things to happen. But I... I would be the shocked. No, no, I can't say. Let me just go that shocked. Whatever. Definitely be caught uh, concerned if this thing doesn't break out now. And the reason why is because we came this high, had this rally, and then here's the statement of the breakout from 1500 hours all the way up to its level last night. So from like uh, 3 p.m. up until midnight Eastern yesterday, or on Friday on what day is today? Saturday. So Friday at. Um, it was showing, okay, we're going to break it. It barely broke out above the high. Unable to hold support where we came from a previous resistance, thus rather potentially resisting that level if it breaks down below the support it had at the 1067 handle. And when I see a situation like that, where it has that type of failed breakout like that, where it's supposed to go off for a big gain like that, and then, we have a, and then it does something like this and it breaks down, oh, this might not be fun in the sense that, well, whatever come back down here and if that happens maybe I'll get a few buybacks here and there but for what it's worth that's not what I'm looking for on this like AMA theta because when it came down to it I can remember back in here when this was like uh, I up in this top I'm like come on I need this to go down I got to get the buybacks well I got that and I got buybacks like crazy now I'm like oh I need this to go up I need to get all those things that I bought I need to sell so I'm like yeah I could buy back what I sold last week and whatnot but I'd rather sell all the things that I bought back down in here right now uh, but when this thing goes off, I got Fibonacci, the key level is 18,000, then 25. And then looking at everything against the dollar, I mean, it's been down a lot against the Bitcoin. Yeah, it's at all-time highs, so, or at least I guess on this Coinbase chart, for this period or this week. Now it's six and a half. Um, getting above the silver resistance, so things are looking to me very, very fantastic amongst the Tezos trade. Switching over to Bitcoin dominance. And it puts, it's in an interesting situation as it keeps going down and looking at this on the daily charts at the lowest levels here. So it's at levels not seen pretty much at least a year. And the weekly time frame, we were talking levels not seen since the, uh, even a couple of years really. Or, uh, Mar yeah, two years. As it had this lower high or matching high rally, or rather matching high. But this 18 average of weakness that it had from... Well, Janu well, second week or third week of January, pretty much yeah, since since the end of January, that ended, or that March 22nd, because now a new statement has been made. This descending triangle is over. It's broken down with these decent-sized red candles. Not supporting in here. So, to me, this thing is possible, ready to go off and to go down and if it goes down that's probably going to mean a lot of what I said at the start with situations where you see maybe Bitcoin 2xing and other coins 5, 10, 20xing kind of deal. At least that's what I'm hoping. Although I got a lot of Bitcoin, I got a lot of other coins, I got more of other coins. And then when I say I have a lot of Bitcoin I, I kind of mean that in dollar value or yeah, it's a good number but a fraction of a Bitcoin is a lot these days, let's just put it that way. Anyway, this is the bullshit USD fund. What is this good for? If you know what you're doing and be careful, it's a trading vehicle. It's also a good, just for reading the markets in whatever ways you want to. And 
Well, it, it funds the, the shit coins, so the coins that aren't as the lower end coins, if you will. It's on the long fund, so that the um, the bear shit would be the bear fund. We'll get to that one in a bit, too, but what has this done during this entire time? It's barely up. Started at 4,500, pulled back down to, like, 30, and at 12,000. So let's look at the two ways with these funds that they can make you a whole shitload of money. And lose you a little shitload too if, you, if you're not careful. One, the short term moves. I mean, we've had a great run today. So here we have a spot where this has went from 8,200 to like close to 14,000. In the intraday or intramultiple couple days moves, like three, four days, whatever. So short term movement. That's close to 100%. And you've already know the numbers are big here. But when you're going from like under 100 to like over 10,000, that's a that's a 100x move. It's pretty big. So you buy, you hold a long time. At some point, you're going to have to sell. Because these things are not, on the long term, designed to win. But... If you get situations where Bitcoin has monster moves, well, <laughs> this is going to do just that for you. Taking a, So, we do see that this is pretty much near the previous highs. Another way of looking at it, too, is... Uh, let me just take a look. Which one was I looking at earlier? Even... Let me just take a, let me just take a look at the intraday. as it goes like, like here, I, I'm just seeing this now here we have oh no, I guess this isn't Bitcoin so it doesn't count but I'd have to see but this market is barely below where the previous high is where Bitcoin's already there but it's not Bitcoin so that's and again you're looking at if all coins are going to kick ass you think I mean these things like if you see like all these shit coins going to like having the 20 40 X moves I would not I do not do not recommend at all any type of holding this for the long term and know exactly what you're doing for this, for what I think would be extremely short-term trades. So the short fund, the bear shit one, 0 0.0013, which is what, seven or eight for a penny? Okay, that's what the price is. Only price pays in these markets. On the, yeah, this is the daily chart. It was at 10 before, before the end of last year in like October, November. It was like 10. So that means you needed 10 to get one of them. And you get eight of them for a penny now. Before that, yeah, okay. So the bull fund is barely beating old highs. These old highs were like 10,000. So if this was one, it would be 10,000 times lower. If it was 0.1, it would be 100 thousand times lower. If it was 0.01, it would be a million times lower. If it was 0 0.001, which it'll probably be over, it would be almost 10 million times lower. Or about, you know what, over 10 million times lower, because these highs are like 13,000, 14,000, and how badly do you want to hold these over the long-term time frame? Thank you for tuning in, and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.